Hi, I'm Aisling Mühlhauser and this is SEO in 2023. Aisling, what is your number one SEO tip for 2023? My number one SEO tip is um, treat translations like languages and your audience like humans. Okay, so let's break that down a little bit. Treat translation like languages and audiences like humans. Um, so first of all, treat translation like languages. What, what does that mean in practice? How, how does that impact SEO? In practice, it means that it's not going to be enough to copy your text that you've written in your number one language and just copy translated 101 words, so like a direct translation, and paste it for another language another audience usually they are like a 101 what i call a 101 translation which is like a direct translation you're really translating the words it's not enough because actually when you translate a text for websites you want to translate the intention and you want to uh, reach for similar results in terms of seo in visibility and in terms of conversion so most of the time just translating a text it's not going to be enough you will need a bit of copywriting work as an addition to the translation Okay, so, so if you work in an industry that's um, quite profitable and you can afford to spend some money on getting your content translated, is the optimum situation is to get someone in that local country who understands the idioms, who really understands dialects and everything going on in that country to do that translation for you? Exactly. The ideal case scenario is that you have a copywriter localize or at least speaking in the native language uh, of the country that means that if you hire someone from germany to do a swiss german website it's not going to work 100 percent well because the type of vocabulary that is used in swiss germany might be slightly different depending on the subject than vocabulary used for german based in germany and when i say treat your audience like people it's the same it means like people from a different country are not translations of people from another country. That means that with language comes a universe of references and concepts that are different. So it can be very well seen when you translate expressions like um, white as snow. In French we would say white as snow. I'm not sure that you would, this is an expression you would use uh, in English, but then typically this is an expression that if you use it on your website, you can't translate that. So you have really to think about the impression you want to give and what you're trying to achieve with your audience to uh, deliver something that is similar in the country. So really treat person like, like people and um, adapt, localize what you're trying to say for the people in the given country, in the country that you're trying to target. Mostly it means that um, texts, they don't need to be exactly the same. Like you have two articles, it doesn't need to be exactly the same. Sometimes you might have an extra definition or an, a small extra explanation because maybe the people in the country, they are not um, like they don't understand a concept that is usually known in the first language country that um, you yeah, I love your example of using expressions. Uh, every country has their own expression and you wouldn't literally translate that expression into another language. You would have a different expression to convey the same feeling in that different language. Exactly. So that goes with ex expression at the level of words and that goes with concepts at the level of ideas. That's why translation are often not enough in a website. I mean, for some article they can be, but sometimes you really need to go further and you need to find, okay, so if you're speaking about an institution, do you have another institution in the country you're trying to target that is similar, that people can relate to? So it's about the words, but then also about the idea that you transfer and what you're referring to. And of course, the links you use, um, all of the backlinks and this type of stuff. So I completely understand what you're advocating and why it would tend to lead to higher engagement and higher conversion rates. However, there are different 
levels of content that you have in a website, different levels of importance. Um, you have key sales pages, key landing pages, uh, and then you perhaps have blog articles targeting long tail keyword phrases. Is it reasonable just to focus on your higher converting pages or your higher financially valuable pages for the type of translation that you're advocating and then for other pages in your site just to do a, a cheaper translation on them? That's the thing, and you're raising a very interesting question here, is that realistically, a company will not have the same budget for every languages. And so you have your first language and you kind of thinking, okay, but I cannot invest the same amount of money for the second language or at least not at first. So the good plan to start is really list all of the contents. And when I say all of the contents, I mean also um, the contents in the architecture of the websites, the buttons and all that. So it's not only all of the URL and then you prioritize it. My recommendation would be to focus uh, not on a type of page, but on a type of service that you really want to sell in the given country. Uh, for the example of an e-commerce, I would say instead of saying, oh, I'm going to, uh, to translate all of the project pages, let's say, no, choose a, a section, choose a category of product that is very relevant for Swiss German people. That might be another category of products that is really relevant for UK people. So I would say really focus on a domain of expertise of service or category of product and focus on that first and see how it goes before you, you touch other aspects of the website. For the other aspects of the website, like a not so important project for the Swiss Germans, because you have seen that competition is really high for that product, for instance, like a, tr a 101 translation would be enough because you know that you don't like invest in what's really prioritary and then go from there. I loved your advice about um, analyzing which products and services were uh, the appropriate ones from a profitability perspective to be focusing on a different country. So don't necessarily even focus on the, the products that are uh, best for you from a financial perspective and the country that you operate in natively. Uh, analyse which products and services are more likely to appeal to your target market that you want to target and then focus on high quality translations and local versions. I should say local versions rather than translations, shouldn't I, um, for the um, target market. Is there ever a place for automated translation? I think you can. I mean, the plan is obviously it depends on the number of the amount of content you have to translate for your website. And so I think you can start with a, a non-important part, an unimportant type of project of your website that you know will might not work as well in a country and start with an automatic translation. But you, you should have the plan to optimize it and very importantly if you are only the seo or if you are only the project manager you should make it very clear to the higher level in in the hierarchy in the company that this is not going to convert as well so really manage the expectation of the people who are going to say hey no we translate everything just show them explain to them the various level of the translation that can be achieved which leads to various level of uh, profitability for a company so I would say, obviously, you, you can't do everything. I know it's expensive, but really uh, prioritize, manage the expectation and have a plan to do the following, to do everything. Basically, the plan, really, you should uh, have you, your KPIs set and look if the first part you highly localized, how it's working. Is it working well? Is it not working well? And of, obviously, you have the KPI about traffic and your search console and, and ranking of keywords, but also um, get some internal feedback, like the customer support. That's very important feedback because if they receive lots of questions uh, from a contact, what are these questions? So this is not something that can be seen uh, as a quantitative um, data, but nevertheless, it's very important for you to gather this internal feedback. Really, customer support, they are your friends in your company, so you should really um, know what type of questions they're always answering. 
Absolutely. I'm a big advocate of customer service and sales team as being people that you speak to on a regular basis because they have direct communication with customers and they know what's happening on the, on the coal face, as um, it's called, as a, an expression in the English language. Uh, one other question is, um, how do you ensure that you're covering the right keywords in another language if you don't speak the language, i.e. is it necessary as well as employing a local writer who understands that local country to also employ a local SEO? What I would do, I would start with translating the keyword research, like translating with the, with the robots sort of automatic translation and get an export from a tool such as Ahrefs and SEMrush. And then maybe choose the highest keywords if you don't have someone, if you don't have the SEO to do the whole keyword search and maybe just have a couple of keywords, the one you plan to use, checked by um, the SEO or the copywriter. So that would be a cheapest alternative if you can't have the local SEO doing the keyword search, just checking the, the ones you want to use. Obviously, I mean, in an ideal scenario, again, you have your SEO who is local, who is going to do the keyword search, and then you have the copywriters, because this is what you do in your primary language. So your secondary language is a language and your audience is an audience. It's just not a copy paste of the, of the first audience. But I know this is expensive. So again, you can select, you can do yourself first part of the job with the tools you have at your disposal and then only check the essential keywords you're planning to use when you do your URL mapping. So that would be an alternative. So you've shared what SEO should be doing in 2023. So now let's talk about what SEO shouldn't be doing. So what's something that's seductive in terms of time, but ultimately counterproductive? Something that SEO shouldn't be doing in 2023. First thing, like be very careful of the type of words your clients is asking you to do something. For instance, like if the client comes to you and say, oh, can you translate this keyword search? And the, the translation work is very different from idea gathering and data management of a keyword search. So you should not settle for translating a keyword search if you are a SEO or you should be really mindful and discuss with your clients. Do you want me to translate the words and quality check them or you want me to find the better alternative? So go through the process of the idea gathering and the um, keyword multiplier and this kind of thing. So don't settle as an SEO, don't settle for work that sounds like translation because very often the clients, they expect to have the cheap translations with the SEO results. And the SEO process is different from the process of translations. So you like, be careful with that. Don't settle with anything that sounds like translation or really frame it very well because one of the risks you have, and it happened to me very often, is like you translate the keyword search and quality check the words and then the client checks on the tool they have access to and they're like, oh, but there was this alternative. You didn't tell me there was this alternative, but you are an SEO. And I'm like, yeah, but you asked me to translate the keyword search, which is different than really um, doing the, the whole process of idea gathering. And so usually, your keyword search are two different documents and then you can map the translation, obviously. But first, you have to look for opportunities and find idea and gather. So really don't settle, like be careful with the wording of the clients and what they're asking for to be sure that you can deliver the results they're expecting and for your worth, obviously. Iseline Mohauser is a, an SEO consultant at pilia.ch. That's P-I-L-E-A.ch. Iseline, thanks so much for being part of SEO in 2023. Thanks a lot, David, for having me. And thanks for the great work. I was already a big fan of SEO 2022. So that's an honor to be part of SEO 2023. <laughs> Get your copy of SEO in 2023, the book, over at SEO in 2023. Dot com.